Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to take a look at the probability function. The reason why I said a first look is because the probability function actually can be a mathematical function, like an equation. But in this case, we're going to look at it in a simplistic manner. So what is a probability function? Well, first of all, we use the letter P to indicate the probability function. And then the definition of it, that it assigns a number from 0 to 1. The only number you can have in a probability function is something between 0 and 1. It could be 0, it could be 1. If it's 0, it means there's 0 probability that this event can occur. If it's a 1, then there's a 100% probability that this event will occur. So that's why you assign a number to the event from 0 to 1, and it assigns that number to each event in the sample space such that. And so there's some rules to it. Now let's say here we have a sample space, the numbers from 1 to 6. That could be the numbers on the die. And let's say we have three events. Event A, event B, and event C. Event A is the numbers 1, 3, 5. Those are the elements, 1, 3, 5. Event B is the elements 2 and 4. Event C is 4, 5, and 6. All right. Now in this case, we're going to have four rules. First of all, the probability that the events in the sample space occur is equal to 1. That means there's a 100% probability that the outcome will be some element of the sample space. That makes sense. The sample space represents all the possible outcomes, so therefore, since you represent all the possible outcomes, there's a 100% probability that one of those will come, uh, will, that the outcome will be one of those elements. The second no rule is that the probability that some event will occur is equal to the number of ways A can occur, the event A, divided by the total number of outcomes. So in our particular example, the possible outcomes for A is 1, 3, and 5. So there's three possible outcomes, 1, 3, and 5, out of a total possible outcomes of 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the probability in this case would be equal to three possible outcomes out of a total of six possible outcomes, which is 1 over 2, which is 50%, or 0.5. So Let's say you toss the die, therefore there will be a 50% probability that you'll get either the number 1, 3, or 5. Alright, what about A union B? What is the probability of A union B? Well, there's two possibilities here. One is that A and B are disjoint, like in this particular case. So here you have 1, 3, 5, and 2 and 4, so there's no elements in common, so they are disjoint, and so therefore the probability is simply the probability of A plus the probability of B. So in this case, that would be equal to, well, 3 out of 6 is the probability of A. There's 6 possible outcomes in the sample space, and A has 3 of those 6. So 3 out of 6 is the probability of A. Plus, now you see that B has 2 elements. So therefore, there's 2 out of 6 opportunities for B to, uh, for B to be true. So therefore, the total probability of getting one of the elements to either belong to A or B. Remember, the, the, and the meaning for union means or. If it belongs to A or belongs to B, then it, you have the right number. And so therefore, there's a total of five out of six possibilities, and therefore the probability is five out of six. Finally, what if there's overlapping? Now I used A and B, but there's no overlap, so maybe I should use C here. Let's try that, because there is an overlap with C, so let me use C there, and let me put the C in here, event C, let's put event C in here, that makes it better. So now you can see that there is indeed an overlap between A and C. Notice that the number 5 overlaps, so therefore there is an overlap, so the rules are a little bit different. So what is the probability that A union C will occur? Well the rule is that you take the probability of that A will occur, plus the probability that C will occur minus the probability that A intersect C will occur. All right? The probability of A, well, that's equal to three possible outcomes out of six, so the, the probability there, that would be equal to three divided by six, plus the probability of C. Now notice there's three possible outcomes, four, five, and six out of six, so again, the probability is three out of six, but now we're supposed to subtract the probability of the element or elements of A intersect with C. Now notice A intersect C, there's only one element, so there's only one possible outcome out of 6, so that's minus 1 over 6. So we have 3 plus 3 minus 1, that's 5 out of 6, and that will be the probability that A union C will occur, that you'll get an element either out of A 
or out of C. And that's the rule for probability, for the probability function. So these are the four basic rules of a probability function. One, the probability of the sample space equals one. The probability of any event is the number of ways that event can occur divided by the total outcomes, the total elements in the sample space. Then the probability of A union B, this means A or B, another way of looking at it, A or B. So that an outcome from A or an outcome from B will occur. Well, if they're disjoint, meaning there's no overlapping elements, it's simply the sum of the two probabilities. And finally, if you take the probability that A or C will occur, that's A union C, then you can say, well, if there's an overlap, in this case there's an overlap, you take the probability of A plus the probability of C minus the probability of the overlap. And that's how you find the probability in these particular cases. And that's the basics of the probability function.